North Korea is a country in East Asia with over 25.5 million inhabitants. It borders Russia, China and South Korea, as well as Japan across the sea. Before Korea was divided into a northern and southern part, Korea was a colony of Japan. After the end of the Second World War, it was abandoned by Japan and split into a northern part controlled by the Soviet Union and a southern part controlled by the USA. The Korean peninsula is therefore inhabited by the same people but in two different divided countries. North Korea has a centralized planned economy, all main industries as well as agriculture are in state hands. The heavy industry is a large economic sector of North Korea since it is important to the military. Agriculture accounts for 30% of the economy. The largest export partners are South Korea, China and Japan. The largest import partners are China, Thailand, Japan and Germany. According to the Economic Freedom Index, the country has the world's most unfree economy in 2017. In case you ever plan to move to North Korea, you should keep this in mind. Since there might be some interest in moving to North Korea, I would like to use the opportunity today to address moving to North Korea. This video is part of a video series that contains many videos about moving to different countries worldwide. So if you plan to move to another country than North Korea, it is worth taking a look at the playlist. But back to North Korea. What are the advantages of moving to North Korea? What are the upsides of a Korean reunification? And what needs to be considered? Most of the Americans living in North Korea are prisoners from the Korean War. Additionally, in 2019, apparently two senior citizens moved from Germany to North Korea. The son of a former South Korean foreign minister and former ambassador of South Korea to Germany also moved to North Korea. It looks like he settled down in North Korea to devote his life to the Korean reunification. This actually is a great thing, as we will see later in this video. With only a handful of people moving to North Korea annually, North Korea definitely is one of the world's most unattractive countries to move to. It is said that North Korea is continuously reduced to the authoritarian government, because North Korea is basically a country like any other, with its own people, culture and specialities. It is therefore fair to analyze this country in the same way that I address other countries in these videos. So that's why I ask, what are the upsides of moving to North Korea? The first advantage is Korean culture. The North Koreans are probably very hospitable and interested people, but I couldn't find any more detailed information. Culture also includes the cuisine. The cuisine of North and South Korea is very similar, as Korea used to be united. According to Wikipedia, North Korean dishes are a little less spicy than South Korean dishes, but they are more diverse in their composition. Korean cuisine has many rice dishes that are complemented with different types of vegetables. Fish is also popular. In addition to the culture, the climate is an advantage. In Pyongyang, the capital and by far largest city in North Korea, with over 3.2 million inhabitants, maximum temperatures of 28.6 degrees Celsius or 83 degrees Fahrenheit are to be expected in July, while in the coldest month, January, minimum temperatures are at negative 10.7 degrees Celsius or 12.7 degrees Fahrenheit. But above all, the number of hours of sunshine per day is an advantage. While there is an average of 4.6 hours of sunshine per day in Munich, the average number of sunshine hours per day in Pyongyang is at 6.7 hours. In Pyongyang you will be able to enjoy more hours of sunshine per day than in Munich. Surprisingly, the cost of living in the capital doesn't seem to be all that low. The average cost of living in Pyongyang is 1724 US dollars a month. But this number refers to foreigners. And what exactly you get for this money is also not clear. So it is, who would have thought, really difficult to get precise information about this country. Another advantage is, of course only after the collapse of the current system, the economy because presumably something similar to what happened after the end of the Soviet Union would take place in North Korea, which would bring tremendous economic opportunities for smart business people. With these advantages, there are obvious disadvantages, because there is a reason why only so few people move to North Korea. The dictatorial one-party system, mismanagement, poverty, severe restricted freedoms and the fact that one cannot travel abroad are only a few of the disadvantages. But what about the reunification of North and South Korea? The advantages of reunification are obvious. First, the south of the country would have access to the north's 14 million workers. Although most of the workforce is not particularly well trained, they score mainly for the fact that they are cheap labor. 
Second, the North Korean population is younger and has a significantly higher birth rate than the South, which would help the increasingly aging population of South Korea. Japan and China are also struggling with this demographic problem, and a united Korea would be much better off. Third, South Korean companies would have access to North Korea's raw materials, which are mainly used for manufacture of electronic devices. Apparently, the value of all raw materials in North Korea is a dozen times higher than all raw materials in South Korea. Fourth, the joint military of North and South Korea would undoubtedly be strong enough to become one of the greatest powers in East Asia. This would allow Korea to have a decisive say in the future of this strategically important region. But in addition to these advantages, the risks are also high. Supporters of reunification often see the reunification of Germany as a role model. But the differences between East and West Germany are nowhere near as great as the differences between North and South Korea. East Germany didn't have such a strong totalitarianism as North Korea. In addition, the gross domestic product of East Germany was a third of the gross domestic product in West Germany, while that of North Korea is 40 times smaller than that of South Korea. So it will be much more expensive and difficult to unite Korea than it was to unite Germany. In addition, the younger generations in South Korea do not support reunification as much as older generations. So it may well be that, sadly, a lot of time will pass before Korea will be reunited again. In summary, one can say that North Korea is probably a less attractive destination to move to, at least right now. But who knows, if North and South Korea were to reunite, the United Korea could turn out to be a land of opportunities. I hope that I could provide useful information about North Korea. Please let me know which country I should cover next and don't forget to check out the playlist where you will find more videos targeting other countries around the globe. Thanks for watching.